so I just want to tell you guys a little bit about our trip because turns out I'm not going to do that again. Um, flying with eight horses was a lot, <laughs> but I'm happy to say like, I feel really good about, you know, <laughs> flying horses back and forth the last two summers. Um, I flew, uh, five back I flew, I, last year I flew five over and flew four home. And this year I flew four over that I flew with, and now we came home with eight. So Romeo, um, he joined us midsummer. That's exciting. That's a whole nother, that'd be going to be a whole nother update on that. Uh, he's amazing. And I'm so grateful to Eileen and my dad, Joe, that helped me, um, yeah, helped me bring him over and, and, uh, yeah, some exciting things we hope for the future with him. But, um, I also flew home three German horses that have never been out of Germany before to our mine. I bought a couple of years ago and they're ready to come over. And then Natalie, who's on here. Yay, Natalie. Uh, after a very, very long search, we found the perfect horse. She's a five-year-old mare. It's always so fun to connect people with the right horses. Uh, now I have a lot more friends in Germany, and that makes it just actually really fun to look for horses. And we rode a lot, and we tried a lot. Just so you guys all know what we all did. <laughs> um, I taught a clinic in Maine. I don't know. It was so fun. It was such a great time, but... Sometimes I get a little too ambitious for what would be like a normal idea to do. And then I'm just like, I just get crazy. So I flew to Maine. When was that? Um, October 5th, I flew to Maine. I taught 48 lessons. And then I flew back to Germany on Monday. Like I taught, I think, five lessons on Monday. And then I flew back to Germany. So I, I arrived back to Germany on Tuesday the 10th. And yeah, then I had basically um, five days or six days to kind of get the horses uh, packed up and ridden and kind of getting everyone like ready for the big for the big trip. Uh, Monday. So before the trip, we were going to be flying out of Amsterdam and then they told us, no, 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 we changed flights. Now we're going to fly with Qantas Air which is a little bit smaller airplane, but a lot more, um, yeah, they're, they're much more consistent with the flight that they go at this time and it's for sure going and the pilots are there. And so then we were going to fly out of Belgium. And so I had like a, a mini meltdown because <laughs> me and my A type personality of the whole controlling situation, I, I need to know cause there's like a lot of moving parts. And so like, I needed to know like what we're doing, where we're going, Eleni got her flight. She was going to travel with me and the horses, help me get them loaded in Amsterdam, and then get on a people flight and go to South Carolina to get her car and, like, come down by Friday to meet the horses out of quarantine. So that's, that's now, now not the plan. And I was like, oh, my God, what are we doing? Like, where are we, where are we going? Now we're going to Belgium. Okay, now we're going to Liege. We're going to Belgium. okay. Okay, so we had to get the van returned, we had to get the rental car returned, we had to clean the apartments, all the apartments, um, yeah, it was just like a lot, so, but it was awesome, Klata and Duda were amazing, so great, so much communication, so helpful, so I was like texting them all the time because I'm like, oh my God, like now we're leaving out of Belgium. We were going to Amsterdam and now we're going to Liege and like, blah, you know, what's happening. So total change of plan. But the good news was Eleni could then fly with me. So, um, after a little bit like coordinating how she's going to get her car down, Richard's going to drive it down. I'll get into that story. Um, anyway, we're going, we're going to Belgium. So then we learn about our pickup time, which is going to be Monday. 
at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> so we're like, okay, so do we like sleep before we get picked up or like what, like what happens? So, and I'm like a freak about the horses needing to like move and get, get, get their bodies going, right? So Monday they all had turnout uh, for a couple hours, which was great. And then Monday late afternoon, I wanted to lunge them all to just make sure everybody cantered and like got their bodies going because they're going to basically be standing still from Monday night when they get in the horse trailer. They're only going to be in stalls and on airplanes and in stalls to like Friday. So that's like four, like three and a half days or like four days of just like standing around. And like they're they're all pretty comfortable in the stalls and they're like moving around, but it's just like colic and dehydration and like ugh, you know I just always worry about that. So how we started to prevent that because knock on some wood, knock on some wood, everyone traveled great, everyone did a super job on the airplane, even the newbies they were excellent, everybody. Like, did a pretty good job loading into the semi <laughs> and coming off the semi was like, okay. Um, my German horses were kind of freaked out. But by that time, they've been in quarantine for three days. They're just like, I need to get out of the this barn, you know. So anyway, back to the beginning. So we were lunging everybody Monday evening, put them all away. We started, we feed something called Aqua Aid, and it's basically like, it's like crack for horses. Like, they love it. I know, like, Thirst Quencher is also quite good, um, but our horses love Aqua Aid. It is like this white powder that you put in, you put in like a gallon of water or like a full bucket, and they will like drink it down. So, we definitely started that, I think, on Sunday. Um, I don't want to flood their systems, so there's always this like special mix of like you can't start too many days too early because then they'll get sick of it by the time they actually need it. So we kind of taper it into like once a day. They just get an extra bucket of water starting like Saturday, um, Sunday. They for sure had it, and then Monday um, they had it in the morning and then in the evening before we got on the truck. So then um, I went back to my apartment and just like cleaned everything out, like the refrigerator and everything, because I was I moved out of my German basement, which was a little sad. Like it was such a great little place, and I just did so much thinking and growth and so many lessons in the academy, and it was just a great little spot. Uh, so it was kind of sad to leave, but um, yeah. It was it was time. So um, I moved out. So I got back to the barn. We had all decided we would meet back in the barn at midnight. So we, yeah, gave everybody um, some more aqua aid right before we got on the van and gave everybody a little hay, packed up the last couple of things, um, got all their shipping boots organized. And yeah, then we waited till 1.30. So we loaded the horses. I will share videos here because it was this like giant lorry. We had, I had so much stuff. We had so much stuff, but like I had so much stuff. Um, I mean, tack and equipment for seven horses was a, like a lot. It was a lot. So I felt like I was moving my whole entire like house, <laughs> but it was my barn, so that you know, um, that was that. A lot of saddles, a lot of stuff, a lot of blankets, just a lot of clothes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we loaded all the stuff up. So then we probably got the horses on. We probably started to get the horses on a little bit before two, maybe ten to two, and they all loaded like champs. But it was like this through the dark into this like lit up box, you know, and I put Bo on first because Bo is my steady Eddie. Bo is the good guy. Then I put um, Apollo on 
because I knew Bo and Apollo would be great to like wait in the trailer uh, while everyone else unloads. Then I put Romeo in the middle because he's never been on a big lorry like this. And it is like, you'll see it on the videos. It's like this giant open space, but then they all go, uh, they travel a little bit facing forward, but they're all in a slant. So then uh, I put Romeo, then I put, um, I think I put then Aki and then Bon and then Freddie. No, I put Bon and then Aki and then Freddie and Denali because De um, Denali is my best loader and he's just a cool dude. Like he's not jumpy and he's been on a big lorry before. So Denali had to go in the last spot, which we had to like fold him in and then like close the doors and like put up the giant ramp. Um, and Bon and Freddie don't get along very good. And Apollo and yeah, it was all this like organizing. And if anyone knows me from driving my horses in America, like I always have to make sure everyone gets along. Everyone has a big stall. This one has the small stall. So there's always this like organization of like, we need it all to go well. So this is how it's going to go in. And I know Bo is like my best dude. He's like my guy. So he was the last, he was the first horse on and then the last horse off because he's just like cool about everything. So then we like get into the lorry. Eleni's sleeping on the bed. I'm in the front seat. Um, yeah, and we drove, I think it was like three and a half hours. We got there about 5.30, I think, in the morning, 5, 5.30. And then Denali was awesome. Fred did not leap off the ramp. So this was awesome news. Um, Aki walked down like a champ, like very, very slowly. And then at one point he like backed back in and then he like walked back out. So he's my four-year-old, my little Dutch harness horse. He's darling and so, so smart. Um, Bon was having a thing. So Bon like leaped off the ramp, not from the top, but like midway down. He was like, Bleh! you know, so then he like sparked up the driveway and then Apollo had already taken off a shoe. <laughs> so that was great. Romeo walked off really, really good. Apollo walked off, but he was missing a shoe. So we had to like tape up his foot. And Bo, of course, bringing up the rear, of course, always the most experienced horse comes in the rear. So that was Bo and he walked off like a perfect gentleman. So we were all in stalls and it was like Grand Central Station in Belgium. I have never seen so many Icelandic ponies in my life and they were like all like we were in the barn right next to the driveway and there was like a helicopter taking off and there was like planes going but what really was freaking out like Denali and he's always quite good but he was like having a meltdown because they were like loading and unloading these ponies like right behind his stall so he couldn't see it but he could hear it so he needed some drugs uh, better living through chemistry. I did ace a few of them. Freddie just is just cool on, on some ace. Um, so for that, we did give, um, I am shots because that was going to last a little longer. So, um, Freddie got it in the muscle and, uh, Denali got some because he was kind of freaking out at the airport. Um, Bonnie got some cause he was freaking out at the airport because he just gets scared. Bonnie just gets scared. That's my, that's my gray horse. Um, we did give some oral to the four year old Aki and he was cool. <laughs> he was having a great time. Uh, we met at the airport, our new little Natalie's five year old mare who was perfect. She's just like, I have no problem Where, who are you guys? Hi, I'm Fari. Like she's so good. She's so good. Um, Apollo couldn't see anyone because he was at the end of the aisle, so he was not doing so great. So I gave him some uh, sane and sound. I gave him some gastro ease paste, which is really helpful for their digestion. Um, I gave um, Bo some of that too, and Bo also got a Supreme to just calm down. And I don't know, Apollo's back looked like it was sore, maybe because he was like pawing like crazy on the horse trailer and just like, you know, being all weird. 
So he got a sane and sound, and then he was, like, happy for the rest of the time. So then we, typical European style, we walk to breakfast. They're like, oh, we can walk over to breakfast. It's just, like, over there. We're like, okay. So we got to, like, you know, uh, walk. I, you know, in America, we would have probably taken a car, <laughs> which is just so funny. Uh, but we walked to breakfast and that was great. We all had lots of coffee because it was going to be like the longest day of all time. So I got back and I think we started loading around, um, 1030. And once we went through security, we couldn't go back. Like first we went to check on the horses. Everybody was good. And then we had to wait where we were going to load the horses and we couldn't go back to the horses. So they brought the horses to us and then we loaded from there. Um, we had 32 horses on the plane, so it was a very busy airplane. I mean, there was a foal, there was a pony, uh, I had eight, um, there was some young thoroughbreds on there who were not that excited about loading. And so we were like, Oh, like that's going to be terrifying in the airplane. If these guys don't want to get on the plane, like get in the crate here, like, are they going to panic when we get up in the air? But um, the thoroughbreds are all a little bit like skittish getting in and then they're like super good, uh, once they get in the plane. So that was great. So then we, they started loading all the horses and there was like this whole process of like, you can help load and then you got to like walk out. They shut the doors, the horses drive away, new, new, uh, pallets come, they raise the doors, we get to go back in. And my horses were the last to load, so that was awesome. Um, that was also Klata and Duda's doing that. Thank God we got to load last, so our horses were in the crates the least amount of time. So we loaded about 12.30. Um, everyone loaded great. Apollo <laughs> was a little bit like, Ugh, I don't know about this, but then he, he was fine. And everyone else like walked right on. They were so good. So I put... Aki and Bond together because they're like trauma bonding and they needed to just be together. And Aki, even though he's four, is Bond's like emotional support animal. So we actually put Aki with Bond for Bond's sake. Um, they were super. Fari and I, I put with Bo because Bo is one of my best travelers and he's just, he's my guy. So I put uh, the young girl with him because I thought, I don't know, I think she's okay, but in case she's not okay, Bo's like, cool. I put Romeo and Apollo together because they're my two big boys and um, they know each other really well and I thought that would be good for them to be together. Romeo's very cool. Apollo can get a little bit nervous, so Romeo is going to be like a calming influence on him. And then I put Freddie and Denali, my boys, <laughs> My, they're like my teenagers. So, um, and then at some point they always start fighting, but I feel like they love to be together. They're always together. Like they're always stable next to each other. They go out together. You know, they're like, they're like the guys. And Freddie's a little bit obnoxious and Denali gets like annoyed with him because Freddie is just like, hey, 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 are you eating? What are you eating? As a, you know, do you think we're going to get to watch a movie on this airplane? You know, like Freddie's a spaz and Denali is like, dude. Stop talking all the time. Uh, I just want to eat. So at some point I had to actually like pull the, they had to have a little partition because they were fighting over the, over the, you know, they were like brothers, just like fighting, which in some ways like makes them relax because they know each other and that's what they do. But, um, yeah, at one point we had to like put the, put the separation between them. So they would just eat their own hay and be alone. So we get to travel with these travel bags, and so I always make sure I have my vet kit, I have sedation, I have things to wrap something, um, banamine, sedation, ace, uh, all my tubes of my perfect products that I would need. I had extra aqua aid, um, I had extra halters, I had um, these really great hooks that hook the water because we, um, put our water buckets in the crate with them so they can like drink and eat and drink and eat. And I don't have to like offer them water. Um, but I do check them every two hours on the airplane, but it's just better if they can just have their, um, water buckets like 
So I had all the water bucket holders uh, in these bags, apples, carrots, and cookies, and sugar. Um, so everyone would like be happy. And, and I always feel like I like apples because they're a little juicy and um, that kind of makes them salivate and want to drink a little bit more. So that was that was in our in our in our bags. Um, yeah, and then everybody absolutely traveled awesome. Like, uh, we had to stay on the tarmac for two hours waiting for the plane to like get ready. Cause I mean, they start, they start loading whatever, five hours before we take off just in case someone's having trouble or whatever. So we just like hung out on the tarmac for legit, like two hours. We had all the doors open. And so the horses could like get a breeze and they were all just eating at that point they didn't have their water yet so um, they did go obviously a couple hours without water but everyone's fine so then we finally uh, we got to walk when they came and like trolleyed our horses over to the airplane and then we got to put all our suitcases up in the airplane and we got to meet the horses once they got like on the scissor lift. So they get like slid over, locked in, and then they get like scissored up to the airplane and then like slid into the airplane and then slid forward and locked. So it's like tail to nose, nose to tail, nose to tail, nose to tail. And so you can't walk in between the, the crates. You, we had 32 horses on board, so you, in, from where we were sitting, which is in the front of the plane, this did not have an upstairs, so it was a little bit smaller plane, um, but two pallets of horses go side by side. But you, there was no space to like walk through to the one side, so you had to go where we sat, you either had to go out the door on the right side and walk down, and it was like this much room, so you were like shimmying down there. Or you can walk and then take the left door and then go check the And I had horses on both sides of the plane, so we were kind of always, like, moving around. But Eleni was with me, which was awesome. So all the horses got into the plane great. They were just happy. They were so happy. So that was great. I feel like my horses are like, oh, I, I get where we're going now. And Aki is the most well-adjusted four-year-old on the planet. So he was just like, cool. He just always kept wanting to put his head like through the wrong part. So there's like a wide, there's like a wide space you can put your head through and then like a narrow space. Then it's the partition. There's a narrow space, wide space. And so most horses have their head through the wide space. But Aki loves Bon. And so he like had his like head like back and then like through the skinny part. And even I'm like, oh, oh, he was going to like panic because at one point he did like break his break the snap of his lead rope because we tied him by the door. But he had, he had his head like back and then like through the skinny part so he could eat the hay and like touch bomb the whole time. So I actually just untied him and then like tied him on the on the on the more narrow part so he could just do whatever he wanted with his head because Aki does what he wants. He was completely calm. But he did not, he wanted to have his head through the, through the small part and then eat the hay like right there. So I'm like, okay, if you're quiet, like that's fine. Um, so yeah, so then we, we all sat down. We all have to sit in our seats when we take off. And it's, you kind of have an idea if your horse is going to have trouble uh, with the way they, as they get moved on the tarmac, as the horses in their pallets get driven to the plane if you hear like scrambling, like then you kind of know like mm, someone's not going to be okay. And you kind of have a sense of like if your horse is going to panic or not. And we like pre, pre-sedated the ones I thought might have trouble. Um, so Bonnie and Fred were, were cool. <laughs> they were, they were, they were, they had a couple cocktails before they got on their plane. And so the anxiety was gone. <laughs> um, but also when they get like raised up on the scissor lift and slid in, if you hear like feet, like then you, then you know, maybe they, they might be a little worried about takeoff. Um, because once you're in the air, like the horses are super, like they, it's not hard. It's not like in a trailer where they're constantly like 
adjusting and breaking and balancing. Like they're just standing, eating and drinking in the plane. So, um, and I've definitely had a horse last year that we, it was in, it wasn't my horse, but it was in the container with one of my horses last year. And we sedated it on the tarmac cause he was like dancing around and I'm like, if he panics next to my horses, like that's not okay. So we sedated, we sedated, uh, the girl that was with him to sedate that guy. Um, but yeah, everyone made the trip great. Um, yeah, we checked on the horses every two hours. Then you kind of take a nap or, uh, listen to a book or whatever. There's no movies. <laughs> it's not like that kind of plane. It's a big cargo plane. So, um, not uncomfortable, but, um, you got to like fix your own food. And so I just bring my own food. Uh, cause I like work in the, I'm not, like, not great in the kitchen anyway. And so then like the kitchen in an airplane just like freaks me out. So I don't want to use the stove or the microwave or I just don't want none of it. I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> so I brought my own food and yeah, we checked on them and then yeah, what time we got, we landed, I think about eight thirty or nine. So that was kind of weird to land in the dark. Uh, so that was like, Ooh, it's like nighttime. So yeah. So then the horses, we take our stuff down and then the horses get unloaded off the plane. And then Duda is there to, um, unload the horses off the, off the pallets. They get driven in a truck to the landing dock and then they get unloaded and then back onto a semi and they get driven over to quarantine, which is like 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes from the, from the, uh, airport. Uh, it's not that far away. So then they get driven over to quarantine and I can't touch them after they, um, come off the plane. Like I'm not allowed to touch them anymore. So you can like watch and like take pictures that like, Oh, they got off, they got off. Okay. But we're not allowed to like load them in the truck or anything. Like we're not allowed with the quarantine, uh, USDA rules. So then the horses um, go into an air-conditioned building into stalls, and then um, I I don't see them till Friday, which was like, uh, um, but they did a great job. You know, one needed marquee, and they all got ulcer guards, so everyone got their drugs and well taken care of. Um, yeah, they they were all quite good. So then. On Friday, I went down to Miami. Uh, Duda drove me down. Uh, so, yeah. So then we waited for them to get released, and mine uh, was the last truck to be loaded. And um, my German horses, uh, Bon and Aki, were like, what in the world is this? They've never really been except from the airport airport to the quarantine, they'd never been on a semi before. And, and it's cool because they have like a loading dock. So they don't like jump down the ramp. They have to walk up and into the semi, but, um, Bonnie did not want to back up into his little space. Um, because I put the bigger horses in the middle of the trailer and the smaller guys in the back because the, the roof, it's a little bit, they walk up a little bit to the back of the trailer. So I got to be there and organize, who was going where and put their boots on and whatever. Um, but Bon was like, I am not, I'm done. I'm done. My fun bucket is full and I don't want to do this anymore. So, uh, it was like three men and a boy had to like back him into the trailer, into his little spot. And then once he was in, he was okay, but he was not having it. So, um, that was kind of hard. And then, you know, no one's on drugs at this point because they've been in quarantine for three days and they all just ate hay and whatever. So that was, yeah. So then we drove, I got to drive home and we dropped off, um, the little mare in quarantine. Who's actually like right next door to Poinciana. So that was great. We just go through the fence and we get to ride her. She's right there. She unloaded perfectly. Like she was great because she's perfect. Uh, and then our, all our boys uh, unloaded really great. Actually, Freddie had to back down the ramp and then he walked forward down the ramp and it was, again, like he walked down the whole ramp. It was so great. I wish I could say the same thing for Bon. Not the case. He, again, is like, woo, 
like leaping off. Um, Aki walked down perfectly because he's of a different intelligence level. And then we were at Point Siena. And then let's see, that was Friday. And so then Saturday, um, we just let them settle on Friday. I, I, I didn't, I didn't hand walk them. Um, I just figured they just wanted to just land and feel like they've, they've landed. And so we just gave them aqua aid and, um, some, a, like a big mash and just let them chill out. And, uh, we take their temps. So for us, it's really important. Um, shipping fever can be a really serious thing. So we always take temps, like we're still taking temps. Um, we'll probably drop down now to once a day, but it's really important. The thing about shipping fever is to the best way to deal with it is to find it early. So uh, when a temp goes to 101.5, it gets my attention. Actually, 101 at all gets my attention. So right now we take the temps AM and PM at feed time. But if I have a horse that's at like 101, I'm like, mm, we always take it every couple hours because I want to know if it's going up, like is it trending up or is it trending down? So um, 101.5 gets my attention. Uh, and at 102, I, I medicate with banamine at that point um, because I don't want it to get to an emergency level of like 103.5 or you know, 104 would be horrible. Um, and then you're looking at maybe going to the vet clinic with that. So we, um, yeah, we try to do as much as we can at home. We give alcohol baths, we keep them hydrated and, uh, we medicate with banamine if we need to, but, um, we're very proactive about the temps. Um, so then Saturday, uh, we coordinated that the vet was there to do some balance rads of their feet. Um, and then my farrier was there. Thank you, James. Uh, it was awesome. Like, they were at seven weeks, which was long, but I thought it would be better. I don't like to do my horse's feet uh, within a week of a big stress, of a big travel. Um, not only because I don't want a hot nail, that they can't get on the plane, um, but I don't want to stress the lamina of their feet because I just want to do everything I can to prevent any type of stress founder. Um, so I don't do, I never do their feet and then like put them on a semi and like make a big trip. Um, I never do their feet and then put them on an airplane. Um, so I waited. So we were at like just about seven weeks. So then all of them got their feet done and then they all had turnout and grazing and hand walking and just, yeah, kind of just letting them stretch their legs a little bit. Um, we do sedate all of them, um, because they haven't been, they haven't done any, they haven't had turnouts since Monday and they've just been like cooped up and they're super nervous. It's a new place and a new environment and it's really windy. Okay. It's warm, but it was really windy. So, um, we, we give everybody like whatever, two CCs in the mouth. Um, I like to go oral with ACE if I can. Um, sometimes we give two in the muscle, um, sometimes we just give one in the muscle, but if I can just do in the mouth that I like that better. So yeah, then everyone, uh, let's see, that was Saturday. Everybody got turnout Sunday. Everybody got turned out. And then I rode lightly, uh, three of them. And then, uh, yeah, Monday we kind of started up like, like normal. So, um, yeah, so it was actually like a full week uh, for the horses. And I, um, I'm just really careful not to stress their systems too much um, because it's, I mean, when you are standing there ready to load the horses onto the airplane, it's just remarkable that these herd animals allow us to put them in these tiny metal containers and then fly them across the ocean. And I just am so humbled by the grace of horses that they, that they let us do this. And, um, I've worked through my feelings of guilt about that. Like, well, I want to get better and I want to ride better and I want to go to the Olympics. And so we all got to pack up and fly to Europe, you know, and get, get good. Um, so I've worked through that guilt of like everyone made it safely. So I don't have to feel real guilty about it, but it's really, 
amazing and overwhelming just the generosity that horses that horses give us um so yeah we are in florida we are settled i want to welcome derek to the team so that's fun and eleni's done a super job you know helping get unpacked and organized and get the horses you know all settled in we're already sunburned uh, Poinciana is awesome. It's super quiet and the horses are so happy and, um, yeah, all the horses feel great and yeah, ready for an exciting season. So make it a great night guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and make sure to catch the new podcast. I did an awesome interview with Brandy Rodnick who just, um, won the Bundes Championat. So I think there's a very small amount of Americans who have ever done that. It was amazing. She's amazing. I hope you guys catch that podcast. It was a great interview. She's been through a lot and she's so inspiring and I hope it really makes a difference for you guys uh, at home. Okay. So I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.